Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Brody Moore Podcast. Some of you may know me as Leaf X, and I appreciate that you've been joining me on this journey of getting to know a bunch of folks. I think we're heading on to episode 11. I know I told you guys I wouldn't do this because these could come out in different orders, but I think we're on 11. Um, Reminder, if anybody is just wanting the audio portion on a platform that's much more favorable to audio, we are on Spotify as well, so you can head over. Link is in the description below. And uh, let's just get on with it, because our, our guest today uh, is a busy, busy man, and I'd like to welcome on, uh, you'll know him as Lathamir, and uh, he's just a little p- profile picture right now, because I forgot to tell him <laughs> that we're doing camps today. Hello. Yeah, I mean, you know, hello, hello. I mean, maybe I you know, should have showered, you know, <laughs> midday, but no, that's, that's it's all fault. good. We're, we're here, we're here, we're having a good time. I, I cannot, okay, for anyone out there, by the way, because I put everyone's real names in there. Uh, do, for pronunciation, is it Traven Robotai? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's it is. Even though I, I honestly feel like I go like more and more. I feel like I go by Leth more in the day than I do by my real name. So yeah. At this point, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm. I need to legally change my name, but. Uh, <laughs> well, see, I don't know. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people go go by like Trey, I guess. Yeah, it's well, it's like yeah. it's like um, it's like uh, Gibbs. Like his wife calls him Gibbs. Really? Yes. Like he's just that's, that's crazy. Him now. Yeah. I guess it's just the era of online world. You just come up with your own own name, you know, a different persona. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 interesting. Well, it's funny because when when I was when I was fifteen, I said uh, I was reading a book called Del Toro Quest. That's how I got my my name Leaf. Um, the main character's name was that, and I just really wanted to be that character. And I told my parents, I said, I'm uh, I want you to change my name to Leaf, and they of course said no. Uh, that's stupid. <laughs> and uh, I'm just in my own stubborn way. I think I got that because I also wanted to be, by the way, a, a uh, as a kid, I wanted to be a, a weather broadcaster, like pointing to the green screen and calling. Really? It yeah. So I've known you for a long time. I don't think I've ever known that about you. Yeah. I mean, that was my that was like my five year old, six year old dream, right? Like that. Yeah, but I guess <laughs> I guess you, in some sort of way, you kind of still are following your dream. And more of, people know uh, me as Leaf than Brody. That's. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you're you're you're, you're like slightly off there, but you you from from five years old, you kind of followed a similar path. Take that, I parents. Mean, yeah. Take- <laughs> I always knew. I always knew I was going to get my way. I do have to. I do yeah. have to ask though. Um, we're getting right into your personal. How can you start your day without shower? I cannot start my day without a shower. I have well, to shower. Here's what I say because, like, I work at a computer for like you know ten, twelve, fourteen hours uh-huh. a day sometimes, and. The last thing I want to do is be sitting at a sweaty table desk all day and then shower again for a second time in the day. So I tend to just wake up. If I'm going to do like camera on a, on a stream or something, then I will shower. Before, but you realize but the desk wouldn't be sweaty if you showered beforehand. No, no, I just sweat. No, <laughs> okay. I have. I do. I get sweaty. You know, with like studio lights, especially like, you know, it just it just gets sweaty in here. So I, I, I tend not to with two, two or three computers running in one room <laughs> in closed space. That's true. Yeah. Okay. It becomes quite the sauna. So yeah, I, I tend to just shower after. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a thing I've always done. You, you need to set up, um, some sort of venting system to oh, utilize yeah. that heat into the rest of the house. Save some hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, like this house has two, two, uh, AC units and two heaters. So, uh-huh. It's already pretty efficient. <laughs> pretty efficient. <laughs> they had to put a second one on the second floor. That way, it would distribute better. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. It's just, I, I don't know. I just, sorry, I didn't shower. It's a nice I, project. I, 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 okay. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, don't don't give. Uh, I I've learned also don't give any kind of hint that a project there's a problem to solve to Leth because he'll just start working on it immediately. We didn't have cams, and uh, when I blew up this little thing beside us here, it was very low res. Um, and he's like, well, so I made a up. circle. Let me go in Photoshop. <laughs> let me start <laughs> messing around. Immediately. I can't be, I can't be letting you down and then not, you know, finding a solution. No, no, this is just, my fault. So, well, I want to know, like, do you constantly have a drive to like solve things around you? Cause like I, I've, I've known I, you for a bit now and it's, it seems like you, you just like to make things work. I mean, I guess I, yeah, because like I used to work at a, uh, engineering consulting firm uh-huh. Uh, before, well, I was actually playing Rock League already. I was like, on Ghost at the time, but I like you know these these companies that they they're all like these old old age companies where yeah. Google spreadsheets was was never a thing and and they used Excel, but they only knew like basic Excel. So 
I like mean, they, they did everything so. the paper way, right? And so I reimagined their entire system, which I, I probably took a few people's <laughs> jobs by doing it. But like I reimagined their whole system that way when they do like an inspection on a train, yeah. it'll go into a, an organized spreadsheet based on the numbers they input. So that way it just like immediately uh-huh. averages out all of the inspections and stuff. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I guess I always just look for problems to solve. Well, That's you, the same thing with like map making, right? Yeah, so. you, have, well, you have an engineering degree, do you not? Yeah, electrical. Electrical, yeah. I mean, it's still the the idea is like problem solving, right? Like trying to, to like what. Uh, here's the thing: I never. They always say think like an engineer, and uh, I never really understand. Like, what is it about engineering school that to give away all the secrets? To all con- get condense your entire schooling into into a few sentences here. What what is it that makes an engineer? an engineer rather than someone who just solves problems, you know? Yeah, well, that's the thing, though. I think that engineering is really just super critical thinking and being able to think us out of the box. I mean, that's always been, like, you know, the motto of school is always like, oh, think us out of the box or whatever. But, like, really, like, being presented with a a problem where there seems to be no solution and just having to, you know, work through it. And that is either trial and error or, Mm -hmm. you know, utilizing everything you've learned ever. (laughs) which I've learned during exam season that that is how you have to play it out. Like, like it really is being able to um, search for the solution in a unique way or that like just basically critically thinking um, beyond what you would normally uh-huh. do as a human being. I mean, it, you never use your Pythagorean theorem in a regular right, day, yeah. but you know, you're still learning how to learn is the biggest thing. So, how, I mean, but, but how, so I, I just wonder, do you feel like people that are inherently, or like just trend towards more of a creative side tend to be better engineers because how do you teach someone to think outside the box? Cause like you can't just say, think outside the box, but like, Oh yeah, now I've come up with this magical solution. Like you, you have to right. have a pro Like how do you teach someone to do that? I mean, even within my friend group at school, like there were definitely people who struggled more and like, you can definitely work at a skill and, and engineering is a skill. Like mm-hmm. it is okay. a certain mentality you have to have a certain way of critical thinking and and like my my friend my one friend i i would usually catch on to things pretty quickly like i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna stroke my own ego but like that's what we're here to do this episode's about you okay (laughs) (laughs) but like i would pick up things pretty quickly and i would tell my friend like okay this is how i figured this out and like i realized quickly that the way that i figured it out the way that i visualized something like um Mm -hmm. didn't work for him and so i had to like as a teacher i'd i tried to like think of like trying to teach him how to figure it out, I would think of a different way to approach it or visualize it. So I quickly learned that I was not very good at teaching basics to people because mm-hmm. I would get too impatient. Yeah. <laughs> but like advanced stuff, I'm really interested in. That's what I think it's like relates to even Rocket League stuff, like doing my road mm-hmm. to SSL. I, I'm not really a particular fan of the early stuff because I don't, I, it's hard to yeah. put myself in the shoes of someone who's never touched a game before or like yeah. never touched engineering before. So, but someone who's got a decent understanding of it is definitely, I'm better at that. For sure. Yeah. Well, I've uh, I've also found. I mean, like this is a pretty common known phenomenon or well known phenomenon is that to to properly teach someone something, you you have to really understand it to a good degree to the point that um uh, they've always said if you can't explain something in a, a term that a five year old can understand, you probably don't understand it. Yourself. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like in school, I would never go to class, and that was just because, <laughs> like, oh my, my we got rebel, <laughs> rebel my, here. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm not suggesting, nor uh, you know, uh, recommending you do this. But like not for condoning. me in university, th- that's the thing, right? Because like if you want to teach somebody a skill or or teach someone a concept, not everybody learns the same way. Mm-hmm. And I personally think that the the university system of having like 200, 300 you know, kids, I mean, they're young adults, but yeah, all trying to learn the same thing in the same way the professor's teaching. Like, like I said, the way that the professor might think that they need to explain it to somebody, how they learned might not be. And the better professors yeah, yeah. obviously understand that concept, but, but what do you at do the same when time, you have 300 students? It's not like you can just take them all on one-on-one, right? Yeah. Most mo- like I went to Queens in Kingston, okay. Ontario and, yeah. and you know, it was a heavy engineering school. It was well known for its engineering, but like, it's slide. Everything was slideshow based, so it's like, oh, here's one that, slide yeah. of this concept, and then we just move on. And I'm like, ah, uh, but I need just to look at this and make sure I really get it. Yeah. Are you um, Are you a hands on person, or are you do do you like theory? Um, I'm. I would say I'm men- mental visually. Like I'm good at that. But okay. 
like sometimes like I want to make sure I really understand it, not just like the base level. And then, then I like I'm usually one of the people that put my hand. I, I'm not I'm not like the oh do we forgot we have Hermione homework. Granger. Like, right? No, I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, I will be like one of the people that answer the questions a lot because I want to make sure I get it. I, I don't even care about yeah. being wrong. Like in school, I didn't care because I would rather be the one that like goes like hey this is how I'm thinking about it. Like, yeah, because if it is it. wrong, then you you need to know that early on instead well, of trying being to build wrong. Fundamentals yeah, that's on, right? that's another thing about engineering. Failing is actually like one of the biggest ways yeah, to, yeah. to learn. I mean, we we've seen that in bridge building. We've seen you know bridges collapse and fail. Obviously, it was horrific that it happened. But like p- people, like engineers, they learn from that stuff. Yes, from from that's why they do rigorous testing. So yeah, do you, yeah I, I sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, do you, do you think do you think that mentality of of failure uh, landed towards your ability to play at a professional level in in a in an esport like Rocket League? A hundred percent. I I think it definitely does, and I think like being able to like look at every detail, every moment of Rocket League, and be like, okay, I need to move my car this way, mm-hmm. or like I don't need to never never do this again, like specifically like mistakes and i think that i say this a lot like all these young guns i think the reason why they come out swinging and they do really well is they're not burdened by failure yeah in rocket league they don't have the idea of like a risk like they've (laughs) never seen something go wrong in a certain scenario i'm not saying like this wise like you know all-knowing rocket league player but you're growing a beard as we're talking i can hear it (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, (laughs) old gray beard (laughs) yeah it, it like i really think that the more you play the game the more you definitely play more efficient and stuff like that and i think that that in Rocket League, the nature of Rocket League is that the le- the the most efficient play is not always the best. Yeah. Um. So knowing knowing that you need to play like inconsistently consistent is a very weird phenomenon about Rocket League. I feel like it's n- not like that in any other game. Yeah. Like League of Legends, you've got to be like, okay, the perfect On play point, is yeah. to hit your precise shots, but shooting off target in Rocket League might not actually be a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's you true. Yeah, expect yeah. it. It's really interesting. Yeah. It. it uh... Oh man, I, there's I have so many questions I want to go. By the way, I do want to mention this is going to end up being uh, a bit of a shorter episode. I mentioned he's a very busy guy. Also, I feel like just everything you say is fast and packed. Full. Oh, I t- like I, it's I talk condensed. So fa- but, <laughs> I talk so fast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's good because it, it, it's condensed. Like they just there. It's just every sentence you say ends up being something of of substance. You you talk about efficiency. Is that something you you uh have oh, tried to I've, do with I've, talking as well like it's just... a problem it's a problem i have because like like when i'm doing my voiceovers which i do every day obviously for my videos uh-huh. like every day i'm writing a script i have to write the script i can't ad lib it because i want to make sure i fit in like that as much 30, as possible. That 30 seconds of that intro is really important yeah. to fit in like mm-hmm. references to old videos and all that stuff so I, I, I always write it down but my problem is my brain reads way too fast for my speaking so i end up re- saying the wrong mm-hmm. word while i'm Getting the words in my head because yeah, I'm already like you're getting ahead on of the yourself. Next yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm very bad with that. I speak so fast with my intros. I definitely think that I'm like during my videos, I'm not as fast. But yeah, yeah. when I have an idea of what I'm trying to say, I just want to spill it out because my anxiety is like, say it, get it, <laughs> go. Yeah, because I'm, I'm already trying to say the next thing that's I'm already thinking about. That's definitely like yeah. I haven't been diagnosed. And I'm not gonna say I have ADD or ADHD because you know it's uh-huh. way overdiagnosed lately, but. I yeah. definitely probably have something yeah, I, along those lines. Well, I wonder about ADHD because uh, with ADHD, part of the problem with it, and this is something I suffer from, is the um, your there's a, essentially a severance, like the the highway that carries dopamine to the like the frontal lobe to the parts that the reward centers um, that says, "Hey, you should be doing this," or "This is a good thing, good job." Um, yeah. is is shut down essentially. So doing things for me. I have so many ideas of what I do. You should see how many projects I've written down. The problem is, for me is starting those things because when I think about starting something, it almost feels physically uncomfortable because there's no dopamine saying, hey, that's a good idea. Let's give you a little reward now to get you started on it. And then once you're started, you'll get more reward later. I just don't get that to start. And, and right. doing tasks like that become incredibly um, uncomfortable for me. But you are always started on tasks so i wonder like do you feel that uncomfortableness or is like that because like i i wouldn't i'm not a doctor so i'm not going to say you don't have it oh yeah of course i i think that i do a very good job of hiding the fact that i'm a big procrastinator i think Mm. that that's like you do because yeah people think that i'm super efficient i'm not always efficient and like this is the thing right like i i always have multiple projects or multiple videos ideas on the go especially road to ssls are really tough for me to record because i just have no motivation to do it and i have to be like in the right mindset yeah. Um, to make sure I'm always speaking about what I'm thinking and making sure that's actually valuable, especially because like with the road to SSL, it really 
is daunting to me but that I can't like just you know skip a day or skip an episode or whatever uh-huh. it's like a, a specific schedule I stay Moves on and stuff like that yeah. people have expectations and so I try to record when I feel good about them and same thing with like map making is I I don't always want to build a map like the Among Us Rocket League Among Us or Rocket League Fall Guys those, those were ones? daunting to yeah. me those are big ones and like I I always have multiple projects on the go because that way when I'm when I'm not feeling a certain project, I have another one to work on that I might be interested in. So mm-hmm. the more I have available to me, the better, because then I can be like, oh, I don't want to build this one right now. I want to build this one or, you know, vice versa. Yeah. Well, I, I, people listening to the podcast are um, going to start hearing me repeat stuff. One of them is my my process that I've tried to figure out for myself recently is um, I've been using Notion and TickTick to basically just say, okay, let me if I think of something, write it down in Notion, and then I'll go into TickTick. It's just a reminder app that overtakes my whole phone screen and says, hey, this thing. Um, and a lot of times I'll snooze it even for three, four days at a time, but eventually I'll get to the project. So that's my process of, of like, I, I know I will procrastinate, but I'm, I'm getting to it now. And that's more than I ever had before. Have you been able to find a process to, I mean, clearly you put out so much content. How do you, how do you start yourself to get yourself started on, on a project? Well, document? I just write, so I have like a Google spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, so you do we document. use Google Sheets. Yeah, documents. We document yeah. stuff down. Um, like I have basically uh, dates for each month. I have March 2023 and then April 2023 already laid out. Yeah. And basically it just has like the date on the side. And then I put a video idea in there and we have color coding for like ideas okay. versus like definitely going to happen that, um, you know, like ideas are like not fleshed out, but like I have videos that are going to be recorded, which are yellow. Yeah. And then when I have them recorded, they're orange. And so I kind of just fill them out. And right now I'm up to the 13th of April. Um, so I just like, I just kind of lay it out, make sure I, I like the order of things. And it's sort of like uh-huh. videos I know that are going to go more viral that are like really good hits. Like I try to like space them out and make sure that I, you know, work through a good recommendation system. Cause I don't want to put all my bangers right in a row. I mean, yeah, it, it course, definitely yeah, could be yeah. a strategy like to put like better ideas together. Cause that way it like really booms the channel and recommends stuff. But I, I get, I get a little bit nervous or anxious when i have like all my good stuff uh-huh, and i'm like yeah. I, I don't really feel super confident with all these like these are niche or more niche ideas not to say they're bad how, but, do, like, how do you how do you determine what's a vid- like like are you that in tune with uh, uh you know what I, I, works I, yeah like because um i mean i always re- i always try to replace the word algorithm now with the word audience because i feel like that better reflects how to approach it do you do you Definitely. do you feel like you know the audience well enough now that it you can just say, yeah, this is going to pop off. This won't, but I want to get it. I need to get it out there. I would say nine times out of 10, I'm pretty good at a- like accurately Damn. predicting what, what number out of 10 the video is going to be. Yeah. And we sometimes get surprised. We definitely do stupid stuff. Like just the other day was a video called goal, which was just goal period. <laughs> and it was ball goes here in the net. And we knew that it was like, there's a potential this one flops or it's potential it does well. And it was a two out of 10, which is the second best out of the week or the 10 days. So, I mean, it really just, sometimes we, we kind of just spitball and we we're like, we have no idea how to title this, especially road to SSL videos are really hard for me because it's just three games or four games of rocket league. I mean, if nothing really particularly interesting happens, I don't want to skip them because it is important to like, there's a lot of value in the, in what I'm talking about. But when there's nothing like, inherently interesting to like title the video about I, de- I definitely don't want to clickbait um at least as far as like saying something happens that doesn't happen or like overreacting to something that that wasn't really that crazy i always try to keep that genuine which i think people you know understand and appreciate so when there is something ridiculous they know it's going to happen um so sort of upholding like trust in my my viewers that they know that if i'm saying we're playing rocket league on a popsicle we're probably playing rocket league on a popsicle <laughs> <laughs> could you we imagine did. that line about that's the one thing you lie about I mean, we, 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 we've had that, we've had that discussion where like, we could say anything. We can be like, we could be like Rocket League cars have legs and people would, and we've done Rocket League with arms and that did happen. So, I mean, like we just kind of, we, we, we go as ridiculous as we can, but at uh-huh. the same time, we, we kind of just spitball here and there. I'm a, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to go through a couple of my, my history of the last videos that, cause on my YouTube channel, and I'm curious to see if any of these line up with what you what you would have expected to be shown to me. I, I, um, I don't. My my YouTube does not get Rocket League recommendations really at all. Like I'm just right. It's mostly Star Citizen or like tech stuff. Like it just I just don't watch a lot of Rocket League content. But from time to time, um, I would say yours, Lawler's, and um, I think sometimes I'll get Musty and Sunless. 
um, pop up, but for the most part, it's your videos are the only ones hitting my homepage. Um, and the last ones that have popped up and that I've clicked, probably going to be a few videos ago since you put out one a day. Um, right. Uh, the shrinking balls every time you, you yep. score it shrinks. Um, yeah. That hit my Oh, that's at 1.6 mil. It is climbing. Wow. Uh, same with growing balls, like both of those. And those are the ideas that we knew would do well. Uh-huh. And there are certain concepts of thumbnails that there's like specific um, like designs that we know work. I'm obviously not going to spoil what, what what works and what doesn't work. I mean, that's sort of a no, trade give secret. Us, give us the secrets, man. Like we we we've done a lot of color theory. We've done a lot of title theory, wow, but like okay. wor- words that work. Words is that, that just don't. through is that just through trial and error? Like you just and then you look at like yeah, rates and we and can stuff? yeah, we go through like what like legacy views a lot, like videos that that continue to do well or continue to be pushed. We also we also look at like what videos recommended those and what keywords linked to those. Okay, and we also look through like. You, there's a research panel in the, the, the studio that basically tells you uh-huh. um, what people are often searching for. In the what your week. audience is looking for, yeah. I mean, you pay attention yeah. to that, too. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's why we, like, there's certain things, like, when Rillo, which is the player who, or the NASA engineer who recently got laid off, but he'd made that Rocket League, uh-huh. uh, like, body cam tracking, that was trending on Google. So I was like... It's not. It's not that I just want to do it because it's trending. I mean, it's a really neat idea and it's a really cool concept. And I'm really grateful that Rillo, you know, approached me to to do the video with him. But I knew that that was going to do well, even though it's not the best Rocket League gameplay. And that's the thing too is that some Rocket League gameplay videos, the idea is so stupid that the gameplay is impossible to look good. Yeah. Like me boosting backwards. <laughs> I was like, I don't know that that one's like up in the air because I'm like, ah, uh, we barely hit the ball and we're kind of just flailing around. Yeah, but it's kind of <laughs> so, funny, right? But I'm like, we we. We we kind of know that like those videos usually have higher, uh, lower retention but higher click rate, so it kind of balances out. Those ones will kind of do mid, like they won't, they won't pop off. The ones yeah. that like have continually ex- like the, the the idea changes throughout the video, so we know that like people will stick around more. People will usually hang out for the craziness that happens later. So th- th- that kind of thing. We 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 don't always strategize our videos. Our videos kind of just work out that way. Yeah. Just we kind of just want to see how stupid we can make it. So. Uh, people love to see what we do with it. Well, I, I, mean, imagine, it's, it's, I imagine some of it just becomes like secondhand of like, you know what you should be doing ahead of time because you've already made so many videos now, right? Like you don't. Yeah, yeah. Like we plan it out a little bit, but like at the same time, we just want to have fun with, with our yeah, friends. Yeah, like yeah. we kind of just, we kind of just vibe. And I, I like that we, like, it's not like we've cherry picked a, a friend group, but we just authentically and genuinely found like a good group yeah, of guys yeah. that kind of all know each other. And I really enjoyed Dallas because that was like the first time we've all been able to like actually hang out together. And it was really, really not surprising at all because we were so genuine to each other that we all got along really well as a That's group good. in person. And I don't think you can always say that about everybody yeah. when you meet for the first time. Like you, for example, it was really easy to meet as well. So That's like there's certain hear. people that I, I have a, <laughs> I have a good, I have a good vibes with certain people. And I kind of like, I guess I pick the good ones. Yeah. That hang around, you know what I mean? So, okay, well, I'm yeah. gonna also say that I do that as well. And look at that, and here we are hanging out. Yeah, here we are <laughs> hanging out on a podcast, isn't that, isn't that fantastic? Um, I, I totally didn't pay him a lot of money to be here today. You didn't That's, pay me anything. Yeah, I, I would do this, I would do, I would pay you. So. I would pay, well, okay, I, I negotiated <laughs> wrong here. Oh well, my god, <laughs> um, I could have been pay- paid for this. <laughs> Uh, actually, if you if you are listening on Spotify, by the way, I do want to mention you don't have to do this because it comes out the next day. Um, but I, I I do put out Spotify episodes one day after they'll be on the Tuesdays. Um, if you want to watch it first, you can watch it on a YouTube or I do put the videos up when these come out on Monday at noon under YouTube's subscription thing. If you want to do that, if not, it comes out the next day. Or you can watch on YouTube on full release. Um, they force me to have at least one episode as a subscription video on Spotify. You have to have. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did just upload a, a 10 second clip because they have video on Spotify now. I did not know that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm wondering if your brain's going to start clicking here and using Spotify as a platform because you can set a, um, a subscription rate. I think uh, you can choose different amounts. I got mine at like two ninety nine or something. Um, and uh, like for, like basically like exclusive videos over on Spotify. Yeah. And you can like it, it, it almost can become your like a, its own like fan house or. OnlyFans or whatever it is, just put, or Patreon, just putting your stuff there. I mean, obviously Patreon exists too, but um, the Spotify thing is nice because what you can do 
say something messed up. I had a, an issue the other day with um, the Achieves episode where the audio, my software didn't render it out properly. Uh, and only two of the channels got rendered properly. So I had to re-upload. And on YouTube, you just have to upload a whole new video and you lose all the... Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we've right. been there. <laughs> yeah. right? and, and that sucks um, because that video also got linked on Reddit. So it was getting views and, and watch time. And I still had to re-upload and eventually uh, after taper down private that one or unlist that one and uh spotify you can just up re-upload on the same listing you can just re-upload a new oh video. that's really cool yeah yeah which is which is kind of weird actually i mean it, it sort of yeah. goes along the lines of like tweets right where it's it can like, be abused I, I can see it can be abused but yeah that's interesting like oh like this video was a funny dog meme got like 4 million views on Spotify, but now it's propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plus, people must like this one. It's, it's really, it's really popular. Yeah. I wonder if there's a cutoff for views. I don't know yet. So everyone start watching on Spotify, get my view count up and we'll see. <laughs> there you go. We'll test it. We'll, yeah. test it. we'll switch it to a dog, a dog photo afterward or a dog video afterwards. Yeah. But I don't know. Hey, maybe that, that might be something uh, to look into for Spotify. Controversial. Yeah. Um, just interesting. Reaching the, yeah, it's interesting. They have, they have video. They just, uh, they just, did that i think it was like two weeks ago they implemented this um but uh oh yeah i was i was gonna go through i had it up on screen here um you can't see this but um all right the 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 next two i saw were um rocket league but everything's flooded and then the longest field possible in rocket league yeah those all definitely like basically grasped a wider audience and it's really interesting to see like um, recently Danny made an oopsie on a video where it was twice as long as it was, it was supposed to be because the video had like, I think 15 minutes of black screen. Oh no. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, it's really interesting to see like certain videos, the, the percentage matters more than the video length. Yeah. Uh, like the, the, the watching length, like a 12 minute video that has people watching until 11 minutes would be way better than a 30 or 40 minute video that has 11 minutes watched. So um, we always try to make sure we keep a similar length and the ones that yeah, tend to do like really well. Minutes. Yeah. The ones that tend to do really well, like my average watch time is like 11 to 12 minutes. Okay. Which is like, that's, like that's super, really super good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And the videos are 20, like our average is around 20, 21 to 24 minutes. I would say uh-huh. certain videos are longer, but yeah, it's a, uh, no, that's, that's really good. down to a science over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this is, um, what I'm curious then for when it comes to, um, uh, figuring out uh, what metrics to look at, like what, what would you say, say is on priority? So after a video is done and you want to go and look and, and determine, okay, we're, what, what was, why, why was this successful or why was this a failure? What metrics are you looking at in, in like what order? Like what, what steps do you take? Um, I read the comments every day, like quite a bit, like after the hour, the first okay. hour. So I'll go through and read comments and see what people timestamp and what they like. I mean, Usually okay. it's like really funny, dumb moments. So we, like I said, we just try to have a lot of fun with the videos. Yeah, yeah, I tend to watch real time a lot, real time views, which is like the past 48 hours. Okay. Um, and I kind of, I kind of give it like myself this little motivation. I'm like, okay, sometimes we move videos around because like, oh, dang, today's video is a 10 out of 10. I don't really believe tomorrow's schedule video will be a, you know, one, two, three, four out of 10. It might uh-huh. be like a mid gra- a midway. So we actually like switch a video location. I'm like, okay, actually let's bring a banger up and like kind of sort of hold the, I try to like hold the, the real time views, if okay. that makes sense. Like try to like watch the numbers and be like, okay, I'm kind of dropping a little bit. Let's see if we can pull something more interesting. I, I probably don't need to do that. I just think that it's like something I, I do. Interesting. Like sort of like a- so, so you, do you not pay attention? Do you know, like, is, is, so you're talking about your, your watch time, like is ret- uh, retention, your CTR, the click through rate. Um, you, you talked about the, the, the research tab, like, are, yeah. are those all like secondary thoughts then? Cause like, I would say so, because like, if, if, if the video views are climbing on a video or if I see like the real time views are climbing, it usually means that they are having good retention because it means that they're being recommended more. Okay. So I usually look at this first as like a general, like overview. It's like, okay, a video is tanking. It probably means low retention, low, low click through rate. So okay. I'm like, okay, I already kind of know that based on the right, real time so views. Need to look at it. Yeah. And I know that usually a video does better when the the views are already climbing in the day. I mean, I can send you a screenshot right here. Okay. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you can show this on your, uh, your I should podcast. Be able, I, should, I should be able to get it up. I mean, uh, anyone listening on Spotify, if you don't have the video up, you're missing out here. But <laughs> So they, both these days had decent climb back. You can see where the, you can already see where the video is released because it's that jump. So that's like 12 p.m. So that hour before has half of the views 
um, of the of the next hour. Uh huh. Um, that's always a pretty good sign that the the next video is going to perform pretty decently well. And we still have like another five minutes in the in this hour, so it, it, it's starting to almost equal the second you know part of the peak there uh, uh-huh. for today. So. That's what I kind of watch watch for. It's really good news when uh, you see on the middle peak there where it goes down, but then actually climbs back up. That usually means the video does much better. Oh, so um, this is like watching stocks right now. <laughs> oh, that's that's the, that's the addicting part. That's the addicting part. It's like you're kind of like praying. You're like, okay, actually, maybe maybe it will climb back up, and then it does, and it's like, oh, okay, all right, that, that's fun. Yeah. So like seeing those like numbers is just kind of entertaining to me. I don't know why. It's not like super important. I just kind of do it so I kind of get a good idea. And I think that I kind of unhealthily watch this a little bit more than I probably should because if a video does do poor, I start to think poorly of myself a little bit. Uh-huh. And I don't, I don't like to be a person who like, you know, thinks highly of myself when I am doing well and not when I'm not. So I kind of steered away from that a lot more recently. I kind of just do whatever is fun, and yeah. if it doesn't do well, it kind of you know, I know it'll bounce back. I've bounced back before, so. I mean, that's important. I mean, any any kind of social media, I mean, it, in, YouTube included in that, is that if you, if you start watching and tying your value to the climbing numbers, that when that's they how don't you, climb. That's how you plummet, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we, I'm not going to name names. We've seen that in Rocket League itself mm-hmm. uh, with certain creators in the past that once the video views kind of fell off, they didn't know how to bring themselves back. And after the free to play boom and it really started to drop and drop and drop, like Uh it was really like, it's really, really important as a creator not to fall to that um, that January, February. Yeah. yeah, That hit that happens. Cause everyone's like, Oh wow. December, you know, November, December, all the advertisers are here for Christmas and you know, everyone's, you know, happy go lucky that money's yeah. coming in and then January comes and it's like, no one wants to spend money yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know, it's not a great month for advertisement and stuff. You got it. That those are the most important months to work even harder. And that's what we found out throughout the years that those are where you need to put the bangers people, you know, off of the, mm. the new year's crash. And that's where we like try to like really work ourselves into a good rhythm. So it's definitely been a learning curve over the last five, six years. It's, I guess five years now. It's been a while. That's for sure. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a hot <laughs> minute. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, I can't believe how long I've been doing this. But And, that's, know, still going, and still you've been doing a video a day f- for almost all of that. I think I'm on a four-year streak right now. I haven't oh really fully paid attention. I got 1.7K videos. So it's definitely been a lot. That's, <laughs> a lot that's of, just stupid. A lot of videos. It, it is a stupid. It is a stupid number. Me and Danny always go like, "How do we do this for so long?" Yeah, I and mean, it's just I, the Danny two came of you, in. right? Like, I mean, obviously you have the uh, people you're recording with, but like in terms of creation, it's is it just you and Danny? Uh, Trev is also in there doing monthly highlights. Gotcha, um, he okay. also comes in and edits like two to three videos a, a week when, or not a week, a month uh-huh. when Danny needs like a second to like breathe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the three of us, and then my sister is also doing my second channel now. Uh, which is variety content and stuff. So it's just Lethamir 2. I've I've had so many comments about Lethamore being the name of the channel, but I really think that the <laughs> brand recognition is more important than the meme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's it's the same thing. I mean, you look at like Linus Tech Tips, for instance. Like they have like almost yeah. 100 employees now and like half the videos, Linus isn't in them, especially with like their other brands, like the uh, WAN show and all that stuff, right? It's like, yep. well, I guess he's on that too. But it's, they... They 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 understand that the LTT brand is more important than if Linus is on screen. It's just people say, "I know what I'm expecting from Linus Tech Tips," right? Right. Yeah, Tech Tips. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and they're very good at it. Um, I do watch their videos too. So it's uh, I I wouldn't say I'm a big on like taking inspiration for what from what works on other channels. I feel like I just use my own stuff. That's where again I try to look at the word algorithm as audience be right because your audience is not like you're you're not a tech tip channel you don't need tech tip audience right right exactly and even within rocket league i feel like certain creators don't cater to what i want to do as a creator Mm -hmm. um like for example musty earlier on musty was like big on like funny noises and stuff like this and i i didn't really like editing in extra stuff and i also didn't want danny to spend as soon as we do do daily i didn't want him to spend time doing that kind of stuff yeah it would be be insane you could you you couldn't do that it's impossible so but like I knew that being good at the game was definitely helpful and I definitely still practice a lot because I know that mm-hmm. I can help people, you know, learn and stuff. And that's why I do practice a lot still. And people are like, why, why is this guy insane and still, you know, at the top level SSL mm-hmm. top 100? It's because I, I, I know that my audience likes learning from me and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I'd use that not yeah. as an advantage or anything. Just I know that's part of 
who I am as a creator. So, um, I'm I'm curious then because you you just, you mentioned that you um, you don't um, you you try not to look at, at numbers, right? Like you uh, like you said, you try to pull yourself away from that. Is there how, how do you then be proud of something? Because obviously you still have to like is it is it the numbers? What it, is it? Maybe just like hey, uh, this video I learned a new technique for recording or editing or something like what, what to you is pride when it comes to a product you've put out? I think the comments, I think that's okay. like, yeah. it's that's really good. just yeah. the one-on-ones with people. Right. So yeah. I, I, I mean like, I don't like to treat people as numbers. They're not numbers, right? They're people. Yeah, they're people and yeah. I, we, we put ourselves into perspective a lot. It's like, how on earth are there 300, you know, 320,000 people right now? Like with that number, you can see 640. Yeah. Uh, past 48 hours. How on earth are there 320,000 people? And there may be overlaps. Maybe people, people watching more than one video in a day, it's obviously. Yeah. It's definitely true. Well, that's, it, it that's a be... good metric. You want people doing that. That's how your videos get recommended more, right? Is it people yeah, to have like, on the platform? People like, oh, you like this guy, so watch yeah. him. But like, yeah, like these are all people. And I the comments really you know, are where people can actually express themselves to me. So I yeah. like to read through them. I, I like to go through every video. And, and obviously, like, doing the meme of the day for my road to SSL is definitely part of that. Like being able to interact with people and, you know, have their recommendation come on screen and stuff. I like to do that kind of stuff and be involved basically. Have you, have you, uh, dealt with the other tools that YouTube has like community posts and, and shorts? Oh, I, yeah. Well, when we started doing the shorts, I mean, it was kind of a joke. Their new revenue system it was kind of yeah. kind of silly. I don't like the. T- I haven't signed the terms yet because it, it, if you look at the terms, they can actually retroactively take money from you. Huh? Yeah, yeah uh, there was a big thing. Uh, if you ever watched uh, Louis Rossman, um, he he went over it. But essentially, I doubt they ever would. But essentially, YouTube has the right to retroactively charge back money they've paid if they find that there's any fraudulent activity on the advertisement or anything. I mean, that's, I guess that's fair. But that's kind of, it doesn't, it just says they could just take it, which is scary. Right. <laughs> that's, that is wild. They don't give you a warning or anything. Yeah. Um, what I will say is like, like I don't want to waste an editor's time. Like Trev was on that. Like he was doing my shorts for quite a while. Uh-huh. We have like a good set. I'd say like, I think it's like 12 of them or something. Um, or it's no, it's like ten. I don't know how many it is. It's it's something like that, eleven okay. or ten, or something like that. Anyway, the whole point is that I don't want to waste his time. I don't want to make him do all this work and not pay him well. So I paid him really well, but there's no way the shorts are making enough money to pay someone back. And okay. I mean, the, some of the videos were doing pretty well, like two hundred twenty thousand views, two hundred sixty, two hundred fifty. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Like it's decent views, but it's making pennies on the dollar on the dollar. So it it wasn't feasible. Like I'd be making shorts at a loss. And I mean, I don't. I I maybe not wouldn't necessarily care about that, but. They're not. They didn't seem to help performance of regular videos that much. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Because a lot of people use shorts to direct traffic through to the other videos. Yeah, and maybe I'm not. Maybe I wasn't using them. Uh, you know, to say like, "Hey, come watch my full videos," or whatever, as much as I could have. But I think I'm already in a, in a unique situation where being the most viewed in Rocket League is. You're not really gonna get much more than that. Oh, yeah, Rocket hard, yeah. <laughs> do you, so maybe I didn't see the effects as much as someone else might. Do you think there's like there's a peak that you can hit with this t- like channel specifically because the audience there's a cap like there's a. I I, I feel like I'm at the mercy of the game. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I feel like, like I definitely feel like I'm a pretty creative guy. I, I will pride myself on that. Yeah, like I feel that. like I can yep. I could bring my creativity to other places. That's why I am doing a, ch- a second channel because. I feel like I am pretty skilled in other games, like FPS games, and what's the channel? Do you have it? A- I think we're two. It's it's okay. linked in my my. Okay. My, I'll just make sure it's. Channel. I mean, you have. A, it's not like me linking it down below is going to change much here, but I'm gonna. I'll link it down below too. No, I mean, it's any it. any any help is is you know great. Um, and like I've been posting a few videos on there. Some some Rocket League videos that I maybe didn't feel like fit on my main channel okay. just because one like I had a recording from last season that's so old now that yeah. I still think it was good games. It was with Rizzo and Wanamike, but just some videos actually kind of popped off. Like there's one with 74,000 views. That's not even Rocket League. And I was like pretty proud of that one. Like it's really interesting awesome. that, yeah, that I was able to do something different and people still wanted to did, visit the channel and try it. Did you test no, Cause I haven't, I'm going to look at the channel, but did you test new, like a different style thumbnail or did you keep that like Rocket League colorful? Um, pretty colorful. I mean, I'm the one making these ones. So I'm not going to ask my editor, Danny to do that. Like me and my editor, Danny, we sit in a call oh. every day for about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. 
doing thumbnails. We we try we, we're trying more recently to do like a bulk set at a time because that way it's not like organizing every day to sit there and do a call. But yeah. It doesn't always work out. We're both pretty busy, so we're like, okay, we're just doing the, doing the one today. <laughs> we'll meet tomorrow or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I'm doing all these ones on this channel myself, and so some assets like you can see on the Rocket League. Um, how can how long we we can keep a Rocket League win streak going? Like I I made that one myself, and I use some of the tricks that me and my editor have done together so yeah we kind of we kind of have it down to a t for rocket league but some of the other videos i try to use my own style and add you know some flair yeah i got up on the on the screen um for anybody that's watching the video uh on youtube or on spotify um because i have video but yeah yeah it's 74k on the cluster truck one yeah that was a funny video that was fun i i, I want to do more stuff like that more unique stuff where i'm involving the audience that i have on twitch um like i'm i'm no i'm not a big streamer by any means like on twitch and uh -huh. like rizzo is definitely holding a good number on, on rocket league but i don't really hold more than 400 500 viewers and i like to have like a good community of people that actually like to interact and be involved and so i'm trying to do more like twitch interaction as you can see i did yep. the noida video as well so i'm just trying to do more stuff where i'm doing stuff interacting with with fans that really really enjoy my stuff so. that's cool i i wonder if you're yeah. so this is because so i started a second channel um and uh I was happy with it because right away I, I made a video on a, a game called Outward and <clears throat> it immediately popped off. Like my, my first video got a couple thousand views and I'm like, oh, this is a brand new hmm. channel. Right? Okay, yeah. it's, maybe it's just YouTube promoting it because it's a new channel. And I kept doing stuff um, and my Outward videos got a lot. I'm like, okay, did I just accidentally find like a niche audience here that wants more Outward content? Uh, it turns out I did. Um, but it sucks because I made that channel to try everything. And now I feel like I have to just make outward content Stick with outward on that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's tough. And, it, and like, the whole point was to try new creative things. That's the thing. Like, I don't really ever see this channel, my main channel ever not being rocket league. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I don't think you future. can switch it. Like how, how do you, I converted my, my main channel from rocket league to, um, star citizen. But I also, again, wasn't. I have I wasn't it wasn't a big channel to begin with so it's a lot easier of a conversion right whereas yeah it's hard to say I mean you could definitely make the switch and I think that like you're obviously gonna take a hit if you do make a switch where from what you were normally you know pushing unless your entire audience is personality based which I think that like more so now than when I was a pro for sure people are more here for our friend group which is why yeah. I want to do more like party stuff with Guz, yeah, yeah, Erks, yeah, 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 yeah. JG all them all them just like doing party games on the other channel and sort of you know, segueing into that on that side of things. And I mean, if there's enough people watching on channel two, I could switch over to the main channel and see how it goes. But right now, Rocket League is doing really well and I'm still enjoying it. I mean, yeah. I love doing the creative stuff. And of course. Yeah. I mean, I don't like to think about the future too much because it freaks the crap out of me. So <laughs> I, just, I just do my thing. You know, just... Do you think that's a uh, your busyness and doing daily videos is a symptom of not wanting to sit around and have your mind idle? Or is it the other way around? Is it because I... I keep myself busy because I don't want. So you, you, yeah, you got TikTok brain now, where you can't slow down. Like if you do for think for a moment, your attention. Span. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like because I am my own boss, I kind of live and breathe this crap. I mean, like even when I'm out and doing something, like everything uh -huh. I'm seeing is influencing what I'm thinking about. Like, oh, uh, we're in a downtown city with like crazy lights and stuff. It's like, oh, I could do like a Neo Tokyo kind of arcade style something in Rock League. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's something always something coming out like yeah yeah definitely a lot of the stuff that i do in real life i get influenced by like i went to a place called activate in mississauga uh -huh. um i don't know if you ever heard of it activates like this this like cool facility where it's like different live action games where there's like oh. lasers you have to do dodge through oh, that's cool i have to look um, it up yeah definitely look it up at activate actually we should go to I'm, I'm, point, down. Like, I'm, I'm down i'm totally down it's really cool definitely if you're if you're listening to this too as well i would definitely suggest checking it out i don't think it's outside of canada i'm not really sure but okay yeah, there's like basically like I think there's like 15 different kinds of games and then within those there's like eight different kinds of level like levels in it so it's like tons to do okay. um that sounds fun yeah sounds I'm like i'm not being paid to say this i really enjoyed it <laughs> we've only been once and it was really cool it's like actual laser room like if they, that, like, by the way activate if you want to pay us to say this then we <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, yeah, I'm taking sponsorship opportunities but yeah there's like an actual laser room where there's lasers across the room uh and you have to like basically dip and dive and like Crawl cool. underneath I need some, them. And I stuff. need some physical activity, so this sounds great. Oh yeah, we were sweating. Like, there's like rock. There's a like rock climbing one where like oh, you God. can't hold on to certain ones that are red. Like they periodically oh, change cool. red yeah, and yeah, yeah. and red and blue and stuff. So you have to like switch your arms and legs and stuff. Red light. Green yep. light. That's great. 
No, yeah, what they so should they do want... is make it actually just fall off. <laughs> it's like, well, it basically, fall. it is falling off because you can't touch it, right? So That's if you touch true. it, you lose a life. There's actual lives and stuff, and you have to like, you know, do a whole course without losing your three lives as a team. It's just fun, um, yeah. Game, get, they're gamifying the physical activity. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been wanting to go back since we went. Uh, honestly, like, okay, you, I'm down. Actually, we're, we're yeah. making this happen. I'm down. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Well, I think I, I do have to get going in a second here. But okay, I did a- before. Yeah, before you go though, if I can still, can I still about three or four more minutes? I am, d- I am down. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I'm going to, I just want to ask you, because you mentioned that you felt uh, just out there, because I know you're pretty passionate about this. We've seen you on Twitter talk about it uh, as well. Um, and and I'm, I'm just curious, as, as a content creator, you feel like you're at the, the whim of, of the game. Is there any stuff, I know you've been pretty vocal about this anyways, but like, are there any, like, do you have a laundry list, like a top three maybe list of things that you, you think need to happen to because your livelihood is attached to this for the game yeah. to continue either maintaining a player base that it's at or or growing a player base like what what's your three wish list items that you would you would throw at the game to to make sure it continues being successful okay. i'm gonna do a bit of a cop out here because i'm gonna kind of okay. combine two and one okay uh so what i would say is just com- the word communication is <laughs> Okay. Is, is key. Yeah. But what I mean by that is number one, that they communicate with the general public. Okay. But number two, they communicate with the people who actually help keep their game alive. Because mm. I I think that creators, pros, all that, like they definitely Sionic specifically, like really heavily weighs into the competitive side of the game. And like mm-hmm. that is pretty much the only driving force of Rocket League is that, you know, you can improve and you can be a higher rank if mm-hmm. you play more. So just being able to communicate you know, future intentions, roadmaps. And I think the why they've been so quiet is because they don't have anything planned. I mean, okay. they obviously have worked on Unreal Engine 5 for quite some time now. But seeing updates, like just little video tidbits of like, hey, here's us like working on the wheels, working on the car. Like here's, mm-hmm. a, here's one of the items being worked on. But like, here's the difference between Unreal Engine 3 and what it looks like in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, you know, here's here's us testing the physics and how it feels different now, but we're going to make it feel the exact same as on Engine 3 Rocket League. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that kind of stuff, like storyboards of where they've gone in their journey to make it, even if they're like a year or two out from now. I don't even care. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think like keeping the interest of the player base alive is really, really important, and they do almost none of that. I don't care about your next car coming out, to be yeah. honest with you. Well, I still play it. Like, most of your player base plays with an Octane the next week afterwards. I, I mean, it's interesting make money, but... Because think about CSGO, or CS2 now. They What they just did is they just dropped it, right? They didn't do any preamble up to it, so I wonder if there is value in that strategy? Well, that's the thing, right? They made the mistake. I think they, they shot, they're shooting themselves in the foot now because... They didn't want to reveal Unreal Engine Five. I don't think they did want to talk about it because mm. they put it in a job listing yeah, by yeah, accident. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah. then the entire, the entire thing was like an uproar, right? So mm-hmm. that that's the thing, though. Like for a job listing, how do you not ask for Unreal Engine Five experience? <laughs> or like, you know, they need the person right, who's yeah. applying for the job to have it. So it's like it's sort of a hard thing not to just say online. But yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, uh, anyway, communication, I would say, is yeah. a big thing. Um, number two, they still need to work. I, I think that they could work with a lot of the creative minds of the game. And I'm not just saying myself. I think there's like super, super talented individuals have who have really good ideas. And this would tie into the communication. Like if we had an open, you know, almost like a round table where people could discuss ideas and how to keep the game interesting, mm-hmm. how they could implement their own ideas into the game. I think that Sionics has always been very prideful in the fact that like everything they put in the game is their idea. Yeah. Um, and I have actually had this like thought a long time ago that like maybe I'm shooting the game in the foot because they won't take any of the ideas that I make and I basically did like everything. <laughs> 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 like everything you can think of. Like it's so hard to come up with ideas nowadays. But you come up like, with a video, they're like, damn it! Yeah, they're again. like, what, what if they were, what if they were building? Scrap the Among project, us guys. <laughs> what, yeah, what if they were building Among Us and Rocket? They were like a week away. They're like, ah, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't like to think that they do, they do that but like you know even the sumo idea was really cool that they kind of used like sumo is not a new idea I didn't come up with sumo no yeah, one did in Rocket right. League it's been like a thing in different games but there wasn't there was no nod to it in Knockout that there was any previous iteration of it yeah. in Rocket League in, in the in the I mean past, it's, I guess it's it is also hard like how do you nod to it like to, on socials I guess but in the game it's yeah yeah of, that's what I mean like not okay, in the game yeah, yeah. I don't I don't mean the game I just mean like when they released it like yeah. no nod to like 
all the creators that made sumo stuff before even yeah. like i don't think i was the first one to make a sumo map it was there was a I can't remember what it's called. It was like Demolition Derby or something before. I, I yeah, anything. I think I remember. Yeah, yeah, it was a really old map, but like people put a lot of work and thought into, mm-hmm. you know, ironing out a game mode and stuff. I, I, I like I said, I just worry that like maybe there's certain ideas that they wanted to do. Yeah, but I, but someone created before they did. So, yeah, I don't okay. know. They, and yeah. Anyway, that's, I think it's that's a decent. Thought. Yeah, it's a decent launcher list. Now, have you have you been yourself? I've actually been picking up on Real Five. And practicing with it, have you? Have you? Because I know um, right now with uh, with Rocket League, it's Unreal Three. Um, but with anticipation, have you tried to develop any skills? Um, I have watched videos. I have never actually downloaded it myself because the interface is pretty similar. I feel like um, it's going to be really about like what how we use assets in the game, and we can't do that until the game is here. Uh, uh-huh. So I haven't been too worried about it. Uh, my one thought is like. None of the vi- none of the maps that we made in Unreal Engine three is gonna work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> they're not gonna work yeah. in Unreal Engine five. So they're kind of all just Moot. scrapped. Yeah, yeah. That's why uh, I wondered if you were preemptively looking forward to just like getting getting your hands on understanding the ins and outs of of UE five. Um, I know Simple Shark has, and he's definitely told me a bunch of stuff that he's been looking at, and blueprints have Blue, made yeah, a lot yeah. of improvements and stuff. So I'm it's not really too cool. worried about the transition. I mean, I'm yeah. already at like a step ahead. And at the same point, like I don't want, I don't care to be a step ahead of people. I want more people to be involved in this. Fair. Yeah. Like the Unreal, Unreal Engine for Fortnite thing was super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, April Fools was. Uh, yeah, that was a few days. Yeah, we, this is out on Monday, so your your video is yeah, already out. <laughs> a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a tease, a bit of a joke, but uh, I really do hope that we see more news soon. Uh, with Unreal Engine 5, and I'm excited to work Fair. with it. I, I think that it'll be a big boom in the game. We definitely have that one more big jump for Rocket League uh, as far as player base goes, and hopefully more people stick around because there's more to do. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see hey, what happens. Hey, we're all here to to join celebrate Rocket League. We all want the success. So I think that's the 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 common thing. We're all excited for, for oh, the future yeah. of it. That's why a lot of people are frustrated because when, you, when you're passionate about something, frustration comes when there's no progress. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not. It's 100%. not. Uh, it's it's not hate. It's love that's uh, being sent towards it. That's for you. Fueled with love. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey. Anyways, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for. I'm surprised I was able to steal this much time, my dude. I appreciate you sitting down with no, me. No, I, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And you know, like I said, make sure to go. Uh, you know, check out the Spotify playlist for Brody stuff. Or, sorry, <laughs> are you going for Brody Moore on here? Or? I haven't called Brody Moore's podcast. Uh, okay. It's also I'm putting all the meta tags leaf X in it as well. So I don't know. All right. Yeah. Cool. I don't know what I want to do with this yet. Anyways, I'm just talking to people and enjoying my time. But um, I, sounds good. I'm gonna let I'm you get my here. time. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I'll have all your links below. And uh, I'll send you a text. We're we're gonna hang out. Sweet. Sounds all right. good. Take it easy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, As you said, uh, make sure if you're not already on Spotify, go check it on Spotify if you want to listen to this on the go. Um, And uh, otherwise, just hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Like, you know, all that jazz. Leave a comment of any guests you might want to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.